Well, let's go to Antonio Vittorini. Uh, he's Director General of the International Organization of Migration. He joins us now live from Geneva. Thank you so much, Antonio, for joining us uh, here on the program. These, these numbers are, are staggering, and it's only likely to get worse. Indeed, as you have uh, rightly said, uh, we have uh, registered more than 300,000 people uh, displaced since the beginning of the fighting, and 100,000 have crossed the borders to the five neighboring countries. But there are millions who are trapped in Khartoum. And what we see is that uh, uh, water, uh, food, uh, fuel, all basic elements of survival are uh, lacking in the entire country. So we are already confronted with a very serious humanitarian crisis. And have, of course, because of the fighting, the humanitarian activities have been temporarily suspended. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about that, because obviously, as you say, people are in desperate need uh, of aid to try and get access to food, water, clean water. And yet the, the humanitarian aid is suspended. It is a very difficult decision, I imagine, uh, for you and other aid agencies to make. Absolutely. Uh, I must say, nevertheless, that there are initiatives taken by the civil society in Sudan to support those who are displaced and who are more in need. But in fact, uh, roughly 4,000 tons of humanitarian aid of the different UN agencies were looted uh, in Sudan because of the fight. So the question is not just the security of the humanitarian operations. We need to have guarantees from the uh, two parties in the fight that uh, humanitarians can reach out to those who are in need. It's not just the security of our staff that is our concern. It is also the capacity to deliver the goods that are needed by the people and then distribute them inside the country when uh, the fight uh, goes on. No doubt you've got a, a, a lot of um, local staff who are working for you. How are they currently functioning, operating, or are they not? We are now repositioning all our staff inside Sudan. We have uh, almost 300 uh, local staff. Uh, the communications are difficult. Uh, in many places, there are no electricity. Transportation is a very risky exercise. So we are regrouping them as much as we can in what we consider the safer places in the country so that we can restart operations as soon as possible, which means as soon as the parties in the fight give us guarantees that uh, we can have uh, free and unimpeded access to the people that are in well, need. What about, though, uh, uh, Antonio, in places like Port Sudan, where it is relatively uh, safer than other parts of the country, and we are seeing um, a mass exodus uh, of people there, can you get aid to Port Sudan? We are uh, trying to uh, reach out uh, with aid from the different entry points that we can consider safe. Port Sudan, as you said, with a very interesting adjective, relatively, <laughs> it is relatively safe, but uh, of course the situation can change uh, very fast. But uh, we are encouraged by the fact that the World Food Programme uh, is ready to start distributing fund, uh, f food in the next uh, few days. And from our side, we are in an interagency, UN Interagency Coordination uh, KBT, that is also preparing the ground for the other humanitarian agencies to reach out to those who are in need. And, and what about uh, along the borders, uh, Antonio, with all the people sort of trying to leave the country as well? What support is being offered to them uh, by, by the IOM? We have deployed all our national teams uh, in Chad, in Central African Republic, in Ethiopia, in Egypt, in uh, South Sudan, towards the borders. They are there welcoming the people uh, that uh, cross the border, in providing them uh, life-saving and humanitarian assistance upon arrival, particularly psychosocial support, because that is very much needed, and then organizing the transportation of those who are nationals from those countries uh, back to their regions of origin. So we have put several buses on the borders so that we can allow them to return to their regions of origin, whether in Chad or whether in South Sudan. But in practical terms, there are many Many people who are Sudanese or third country nationals, nationals from other countries that uh, need to be sheltered at the border and to be supported. And we are working 
with the, the Red Crescent, uh, with the, the governments, with the civil society to deliver protection.